Hey folks, this is Derek, and I'm playing another analytical Let's Play of Special Force 2. Uh, that was the opening cutscene for the mission uh, called The Mission of Wadi al-Hujer. Uh, Wadi al-Hujer, or the Battle of Wadi al-Hujer, was also known as the Laitani Offensive in Israel. It was the final offensive operation launched by the IDF during the 2006 war in Hezbollah. It started on August 11th, 2006, and ended three days later, and involved a massive uh, increase of Israeli soldiers in Lebanon, something like triple, tripling the forces. Uh, right over here is our good friend Hattie, who sir, somehow has come back from the dead since our last video. He's not really going to move around, he's just going to hang out here and do his thing, so we'll let him. So, the, the Laitani Offensive was called off halfway due to heavy casualties on the Israeli side. At least 33 Israeli officers and soldiers were killed. Uh, hundreds were wounded, and an Israeli uh, IDF helicopter was shot down, much like we just saw here. Uh, and many, many Israeli Come tanks on. were damaged, uh, which makes sense, considering... Uh, so, uh, the opening cutscene loading screen translates as follows. The Zionist enemy had expanded across, uh, had expanded its military operations ah! and tried to cross the Wadi al hujair the Valley of al hujair uh, but the resistance was lying in wait and the Mujahideen taught the enemy a lesson they will never forget in the battle known as the Massacre He's of Tanks. Rimon. So with that in mind, let's check out our first mission here. Alright, so we are to destroy the communication device, cleanse the administrative building, uh, throw a batch of Katusha rockets, and destroy the tanks in the Wadi al hujair So with that, let's get over here. Ta-da! The first step of the process. The communication device filled with Israeli communication. So shoot it. Like so. Mission complete. Alright, now we get in the, the, the jeep and we're gonna head over that away towards the administrative building. So we are in Lebanon, apparently. Um, I'm not really sure what this facility is supposed to be, but, you know, it's an environment to shoot people. Oh! And they're shooting at us here. I'm going to ignore it because we are peace loving. We're lovers, not fighters. Alright, uh, jump out here and head into the building. So you can hear on this radio uh, a broadcast, a news broadcast. Uh, it sounds like a news bulletin about the, the conflict. You can hear some keywords about that. And in a few seconds, it's going to transfer over to music. Uh, Happy-go-lucky, what I assume is Hezbollah music, actually. Uh, up the stairs we go. Ah, actually, uh, hold on. Before we go and cleanse the building, I wanted to show this. Um... We're going to ignore the fact that we're being shot from out this window and take a look at these two documents. Now, the designers of Special Force 2, uh, they generated a lot of the assets themselves. The way that they built some of these things, including, I believe, these two documents, is actually scan in real-world documents from, uh, you know, from their everyday lives or environment, put them in. Uh, here, we can clearly see an old man uh, in a white turban and a black robe. Uh, this could be, you know, any religious scholar. It could be Ayatollah Khamenei. You know, it's blurry enough, and there are, you know, the white turban, glasses, beard. Uh, this could very well be Khamenei, um, who is a popular figure in Hezbollah. And uh, over here, this is interesting. This this pamphlet says, Lebanon and Iraq and Palestine, or Palestine, tunaidikum, or calls you, which is um, a common political phrase. Uh, here you can see, you know, a woman suffering and, you know, what, what is clearly a, a pamphlet calling people to get involved in the war in Lebanon, or, you know, Iraq and Hezbollah. At this point, uh, 2006, bear in mind, uh, Iraq, the surge was just beginning in, in Iraq, and American forces, tens of thousands of them were flowing into the country. Uh, you know... In Hezbollah, this war was going on, and obviously, well, maybe not obviously, in 2006, uh, Hamas was gaining strength. I believe they won an election in 2007. Um, so all sorts of things are going on. Obviously, you know, also Gaza is having some huge problems as well in 2006. There's a war going on. So, uh, let's see. 
if you do a little Google research like I did about the phrase tunaidukum, you see it in a whole bunch of things. Um, oh, <laughs> brief little interlude. This car, made in the EU, you can see on the license plate, and it's a Mercedes. So, very nice car uh, for a war zone. Whoever has this is a lucky guy in this neck of the woods. So we're going to go and try to accomplish our next objective, which is to fire off a whole bunch of Katusha rockets and see if we can get the car to those Katusha rockets in one piece. Anyways, like I was saying, uh, the the phrase Tunaidikun showed up in a whole bunch of political documents. Whoa! <laughs> um, oh, no. All right. Yeah. Completely intentional. I'm obviously not the best of drivers here. Uh, I YouTubed Tonight the Kum, and there's a song, Felistan with Tonight the Kum, which is a folk song uh, about Palestine being occupied. And there's some really kind of stunning imagery, actually. Um, it's a, the the folk song was played over a slideshow of you know Israeli or uh, Palestinian youth being shot at and you know beaten, people being thrown off their homes. Uh, what was clearly um, some, you know, very religious, uh, probably settlers, teaching their children about guns. And there's images of, you know, nine and ten year old boys uh, being handed automatic weapons. And so the, the phrase is rife with political meaning. So what you can hear, I don't know if you can hear that, uh, I'll, I'll get out of the car. We can have a listen. <laughs> you can hear the sound of a muezzin. Uh, apparently, we're near a, a church, or uh, I'm sorry, a mosque in, in Lebanon. And he's doing the call to prayer, which happens five times a day in Muslim societies. Um, the muezzin is saying, you know, God is great, God is great. Um, I testify that there is no God but God, and Muhammad is his prophet. So interesting that something of religious connotation should be brought into this gameplay, especially considering the thing that we are about to do now. Here is a uh, Katusha missile launcher. Allahu Akbar says the radio as we go near to it. This says missile unit. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of Katusha missiles lo loaded into the back. Now, interestingly enough, oh shoot, we're, we appear to be pinned back here. Just, Just getting into the vehicle is enough to uh, qualify us for the mission. We completed the fire a whole bunch of uh, Katusha rockets into Israel. Part of this mission, but um, just so you can see what the tank looks like as it's being done, I'm clicking the button. And you can't really hear it, but you can, or you can't really see it, but you can hear it. And I'm firing off the two shot. We jump out, and bam! You can see. Apparently, um, we are supposed to be shooting these off into Israel. Now, this was actually one of the primary missions of the Israelis uh, during the Laitani offensive to stop the. Uh, Katusha rockets, and this was not happening. Um, the Katusha fire uh, was not reduced. On the last day of the war, more than 250 rockets were fired off into Israel, and they only stopped once the ceasefire was called, uh, three days apparently after this point that we were reenacting. So with that, we just have to go on to the final aspect of this mission, which is uh, to destroy tanks in the Wadi al hujair We're going up the road. The announcer is urging us on here. Uh, and we are to go and fight guys in the Wadi al hujair Get there now. Fire. I don't really see anybody at this point, although we're likely going to have to fight an uh, Israeli helicopter. But see. Oh, so check this out. Uh, as you get into the valley, you see a, what appears to be a whole bunch of stones. Nope. Guess our car got damaged. 
Uh, for some reason, the textures pop in and out, so what looks like snow is actually just the terrain texture uh, sp spassing out. Um, it'll do that multiple times as we progress through the mission. I'm not sure why. It could either be just, you know, shoddy workmanship on the part of the designers, or uh, what is also likely is, you know, they hadn't planned for my specific graphics card, which, you know, I'm making this video in 2013. My card is from year 2012. Uh, if you're a designer, it's kind of hard to plan for the future with a lot of these games. Um, there are plenty of games that are made in 2005 that kind of fritz out when played on my graphics car now, so it could very well be that things are not going so well. Uh, that's the reason. So, uh, we continue to advance. Soldiers, but you know what? We continue to be lovers and not fighters, and we're going to keep on going, only destroying the things. So. Probably. Hey! Ah! Ah! Okay, so the first uh, tank that we na need to kill is down here. Ah, so the guy is shouting at us, kill the tanks, destroy the tanks. How about that? Alright. First tank detector. Oop, I think I hit the, um, the railing. <laughs> Interestingly enough, if I just pull out the rocket launcher, the reticle, as you can see, floats around all over the place. But I discovered if I just hold out the rocket launcher and fire from zoomed out, it is as. Get up. My hands do not shake. Steady as a rock. So, another tank down. And we continue on. Thank goodness for God Mode. Uh, as I mentioned, I've been playing this game with God Mode, and otherwise I'd be dead, uh, well, according to this video, 14 times over. So, hooray for us. Ah, there's another tank. Oh, gotta reload. Alright, another tank down. Now there are just a few more. Uh, here's an Israeli outpost base. A bunch of guys shooting at me here. Alright, uh, ordinarily I wouldn't fight these guys, or I would fight these guys, but I've got better things to do. Here's a tank up the road. Hope these guys won't mind me firing at it. Alright, almost done. So, we'll just sneak through this camp. Really suspending all disbelief in, in this combat game. Play, sorry, guys. But then again, if you were watching to see me be awesome, trouble firing the rocket launcher there. Alright, so, one final thing to do. I completely missed this the first time I played through. <laughs> there is a little fence back here. We'll hit F to interact with the fence, and bam, four tanks down below. So, let's, let's do this as best we can. Wait, seriously? I am out of ammo. Okay. I'm not sure how this is possible. I can barely fired this thing off, but okay. I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way. Kinda disappointing. This is probably a weapons cache that I should have picked up. Uh, G for grenades? We'll check that out, yes. Oh. One. Oh, now I just look like an incredible. Badass. Another grenade for another. Nope. This. Two. And the final. Final tank. Right up ahead. 
Excuse me, sir. I need to destroy your tank. And that should be it. And here are shots of Israeli soldiers being beaten. Uh, interestingly enough, for the promotion of Special Force 2, uh, Hezbollah brought out a whole bunch of tanks that they were that were captured during the war, and they were out in front of um, booths where they were selling this out on the streets. So Hezbollah, very proud of this battle, uh, which ended it. So this is probably going to be the last video in the Special Force series. There's one other mission that I could play, uh, the Special Special Force mission, and it's uh, you know, you're you're supposed to capture an island. I'm not actually not going to go through it because uh, it's based off of a fictional battle, and really everything that I do in that video would not be indicative of anything going on in real life. Um, I, you blow up a destroyer or two, which you know did not happen. Uh, so thank you for watching this Let's Play series on Special Force 2. I plan to do more videos on political games, Arab games, and ideally Arab political games. So I hope you st stay tuned. Um, please subscribe to my feed if you like this video and give me an upvote. Thanks very much for watching and take care.